Hello friends and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, you guys, I'm going to give you my five practical tips on how I'm getting my dream body and how you can too. So if this is content that you guys like to see, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's jump right into this video. Oh my goodness, you guys. This video is, I'm so excited to be filming this video. I've been talking a lot about this over on my Instagram. If you don't follow me, you totally should. I am charlenetown underscore over on Instagram. So go follow me over there for more daily motivation. But I'm gonna give you guys my first top tip. It's gonna be the best tip. This is the best tip, so get your notebook, write it down. This is the tip that you wanna write down, okay? And I'm gonna give you the best first because that's how I am. Like, I just wanna give you the good good all the time. So my first top tip, the thing that I'm doing for myself that it has completely changed the game and I know that it will do the same for you is changing my mindset. And I know that that sounds like, what do you mean, Charlene? Like, how am I gonna get the body of my dreams by changing my mind? So let me tell you, I started asking myself this one question and it has brought up a lot of stuff. So get your notebooks out, okay? So the question that I started asking myself was what is holding me back from fill in the blank? What is holding me back from getting my dream body? What is holding me back from starting the business of my dreams? What is holding me back from being my next level self, from being the best version of me? What is holding me back? What limiting beliefs or stories or thoughts that I have come up for me, what's holding me back? And so I have been just journaling about this recently. You guys know I love journaling. I do my gratitude journal every single night. I've been doing lots of journal prompts. If you guys are part of my email list, I have my motivational Mondays where I'm sending out journal prompts that I'm really loving for the week. And this is one that I've been really working through you guys. And a lot of stuff has been coming up. Like what limiting beliefs do I have that are coming up about my body. And so I was writing it down. And in writing it down, I discovered stuff and thoughts that I had about my body that were not mine. So if you guys don't know, up until the age of seven years old, your brain is still developing. And so your subconscious mind is what you do throughout the day that you don't have to think about, right? You don't have to think about breathing. You don't have to think about blinking your eyes. You don't have to think about how you get to work because you've driven that path to work every single day. So you're not really consciously thinking about it. Your brain knows how to do that and it knows how to get there. You know what I mean? Like you're not talking yourself through little activities all day long. This is your subconscious brain. So your conscious brain is the gatekeeper of thoughts that come in. So when you get to be seven, eight years old, your conscious brain kicks in. And if somebody says, oh, you're fat, your conscious brain can be like, no, I'm not, I am not fat. But ages seven and under, if someone calls you fat, if somebody tells you that you're ugly, if you see somebody in your life not treating themselves right, your subconscious brain takes those visuals, takes those words, and there's no gatekeeper. There's nobody to say, nope, that's not true for me. Nope, that's not true for me. It stores all that information into our subconscious brain. And so as we become adults and we move through the world, we are living our lives not knowing that we have these subconscious thoughts that keep coming up. So for me personally, I just recently over on my Instagram, I was doing some stories recently about the fact that every single July for the last three years, my body crashes. And so for the first six months of the year, I push really hard in my workouts. I am so tired of being sedentary. And I am so tired of being in psoriatic arthritis flares that my brain is like, we are doing this, we are going to work out and I get back into it. 
and then every July for the at least the last three years. The last three, four years is when my real fitness journey has been consistent. And so around July is when my body starts to get really tired and I go into a flare, typically at least a six week flare. And so I go into a flare and then it's fall and then we do, you know, fall content, which is a lot of fun sugary recipes, which I cook in a very healthy way, but still eating too much sugar, even if it's maple syrup or coconut coconut sugar, it's still sugar and sugar triggers my body into flares. So then I flare all the rest of the year and I can't recover and get back to working out until about February. So I realized this pattern and I was like, okay, what's going on? Why is this happening every time? Now I'm aware of the fact that fall triggers making me want to make all the fun fall like treats because that's what other people are doing on YouTube. And now I'm choosing to do something different because that's not good for my body. And I don't want to be in a flare for the rest of the year. Like I want to be able to continue to work towards my goals for the second half of the year. I'm so tired of starting over in January. Does that make sense? And then what's the other big one? My other really big limiting belief has been around fitness. So my brain does a very like all or nothing. Like you're not good enough unless you finish the workout. You're not good enough unless you push really hard. You're not good enough unless you do the 60 minute workout. And it doesn't matter if you're crying at the end, you at least made it through. And so I've changed that mindset. And my goal is to move every single day. Every single day I do some kind of movement, whether it's a 30 minute walk or it's a 30 minute full body workout, a 30 minute leg workout. I know I've been paying attention to my body. 30 minutes is about my tipping point. I also no longer beat myself up for not being able to finish a video. Like I just do my best every single day and my body is responding to that. So when I stop and listen to my body and go, you know what, I'm hurting right now. This is it. I did some movement and I feel good about it. Like I've started 60 minute workouts because I was like, oh, that looks like a really fun workout. My body's feeling good. Let's jump into it. And I got about 30, 40 minutes into the workout and my body was done. Just like tapping out. I am done. In the past, because I had those subconscious thoughts of do better, be better, work harder, you're never gonna get to your goals if you don't push, like the only way they're getting their dream body is because they're pushing hard. I have to listen to my body and my body is so different than my instructor who I follow. And my body is so different than your body and your body is so different than my body. So we all have to stop and ask ourselves, what makes my body feel good? You know? And so when I changed that thought and I stopped that limiting belief that if I can't do a 60 minute workout, what's the point? Like, what's the point? I'm not gonna do a workout. A couple days ago, I was jumping into a workout and Liv wanted to play and have a dance party. And so we turned on music and we started dancing around. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna work out while we're dancing around. Cause she's dancing around and doing all these like fun spins and twirls and like rolling around on the ground. And I was like, I can do burpees. Like I'm gonna do burpees while I'm out here. And I can do some jump squats. And then I did some push ups, and I grabbed a booty band and Liv grabbed a booty band. And we were like, do fire hydrants and it was so much fun and I got a good workout in I was sweaty I was you know what I mean like I moved my body and it was at least 30 minutes it could have been longer you know what I mean but we did walking lunges together like we just had so much fun and then we danced to a really good song and it was just fun and so the fact that my mindset has changed around what fitness should look like I'm choosing to move my body every day and my body is just responding amazingly. Like I love, I love where I'm at right now. I'm so excited to continue to work towards my goals. Like my ultimate goal is to really lean out my stomach and get abs. But like the title said, it's not all diet because last year I was eating hardly anything. If you guys follow my channel, you guys know I was at the beginning of my SIBO gut journey last year. And so I was terrified to eat the wrong foods. And so I was hardly eating. I was only eating like protein and greens and not even that many greens because too much spinach is not good for SIBO and just like, it was crazy. And even then, like I told my husband, I remember last year, I was like, honey, if I can't lean out on my stomach now, 
in a time where I'm eating the least amount of food possible, working out the hardest I'd ever worked out because I was working out with Sydney Cummings, summertime fine 3.0, pushing really hard in my workouts, lifting heavier than I'd ever lifted before and eating in a calorie deficit. And I was like, if I can't lean out now, like, this is it. Like, I just have to love my body the way that it is. So that's tip number two. <laughs> tip number two is I am just so grateful for this body. Like I am. I love this body now. I am choosing to love everything about my body right now. The extra skin on my stomach and all. You know what I mean? Like my biggest insecurities of, you know, this little whatever skin flap here, I don't care. I'm gonna wear tank tops, you guys, and I'm gonna wear crop top shirts regardless to the extra skin on my stomach, and I'm gonna wear the short shorts whether I have cellulite on my thighs or not. I don't care. This is the body that carries me through this life, and I am so freaking grateful for it. And I get to move. The fact that I have found ways to move my body even in a flare. I was just in a six week flare and I moved my body every single day. And what a blessing that is, okay? And it was a lot more yoga, it was a lot more walks, but I did a lot of Pilates and you guys, my butt got kicked in Pilates, okay? I've been really working on my core this year just because I feel like when I'm in a flare or when my body can't push really heavy into weights, I can focus on my core. I can do body weighted exercises, which leads us into tip number three. Okay, so we gotta love our bodies. But now tip number three is getting really clear on what you really want. What is your actual goal? What do you really want to look like? Have you thought about it? Because for me, I told myself for years, I just want to gain muscle. But the only thing I was doing was eating in a calorie deficit and moving my body. And you can't gain muscle eating in a calorie deficit because you have to build your muscles. You know, like you have to eat to build muscle. And if you're eating in a calorie deficit, you're just lowering your calories. So you're gonna lose weight, okay? So for me now, I do wanna put on some muscle. And so I know that I'm gonna need to include more protein and figure out what kind of carbs I can eat. And I'm starting to work on like working out and figuring out some different foods around my cycle because it's been a big topic lately and I follow a couple new girls and I'm just curious, like I don't know the hardcore research on that, but I notice around the time of my cycle, I need more carbs. And so I'll eat like a half a cup of rice around that time and I feel like it fuels my body really well. So just figuring out how to properly eat for my body, but also knowing what I want, you know? So if I want a six pack abs, girl, you gotta train abs. Like I can't just lift weights and say, well, I'm engaging my core the whole time. Like I have to actually work towards my core strength, which has been helping me lift heavier weights, which is amazing. I've been lifting heavier than I have ever. I've been doing 22s in my curls and it's amazing. It's actually 22.5, but uh, nobody's counting except me. <laughs> Yeah, so getting really clear on what you really want to look like and what it's gonna take to get there. Because you can't just say, oh, I wanna just be fit and healthy. Well, what does that look like? What kind of foods do you need to eat to get there? What kind of exercise do you need to do to do that? If you just wanna lose weight, you can do that in a lot of different ways. You can lift heavy weights, you can do a little bit more cardio. You can go for walks and just burn a little bit more calories. You can work in a calorie deficit in which you don't have to cut your calories crazy. Do a hundred calories at a time and that's literally an apple or you know like make a snack switch. If you eat a bag of chips for a snack or some crackers for a snack, swap that out for an apple. You know what I mean? Like figure out a way to not take food away. I'm so excited, you guys. I'm going to be launching a seven day meal program to help kickstart your healthy lifestyle. And part of that is going to be talking about the fact that when you're starting a healthy lifestyle and say you wanna lose weight, I don't want you to think about, well, what can I take out of my diet? I want you to think, what can I put into my diet, okay? So I want you to start thinking like, how can I add more veggies to my meals? How can I add greens to my meals? How can I add 
nutrient dense foods instead of just saying, oh, well, I'm just not gonna eat X, Y, and Z. Okay, say you eat what you're doing. Okay, well, eat what you're doing for now and start incorporating more vegetables. Start incorporating more fruit, like eat a green smoothie, which is tip number four. I don't know, I think this is tip number four, you guys. Okay, so tip number four, green smoothie. Cheers. In which, if you know, you know. I've been drinking this guy since, I think, February. If you guys follow the Mind, Body, and Soul series, I think it was February. I put myself on like a mini challenge to try new healthy food recipes, and I discovered a version of this, but I have made this one my own, and I eat it every day. Now, why is a green smoothie so good, and why do I eat a green smoothie every single day? One, a smoothie that has greens in it is a really easy way to get in all that nutrient-dense food. So I'm getting vitamins and minerals and greens, which is fiber, and it's easy to drink. It doesn't taste like a salad. It tastes like a delicious vanilla milkshake. Mmm, we love her. And it's got collagen protein. So this one has carbs, fats, protein. Now, if you can eat chia seeds or flax seeds, add that in there and it will help sustain your body longer. I still am struggling with SIBO gut issues. I've recently tried incorporating a little bit of flax seed in here. I almost died. Like I thought I was gonna die. It's, I'm not ready for it yet. <laughs> My body is not ready for it yet. So do what is best for your body always. So this keeps me full. If you have this combination, it'll keep you full. Oh, and it's got banana. So the, the banana's the carb. It's got greens in there. It is so good. The macadamia nut milk that I use is a healthy fat. It just, it's so delicious and such a good way to get lots of vitamins, minerals, and good nutrient dense foods into your day every single day. So if you're not drinking a smoothie every day, do it. <laughs> I highly recommend. This has helped me work towards my goal in a very easy way. It's effortless. I don't have to think about it. I just know that I drink a smoothie that I love every single day and it's helping me work towards my goals because I'm not reaching for other snacks. I know that I'm eating something healthy. I don't count the calories. I do not care. I do not count calories. I, it's not good for my brain. I did the lumen thing for like a couple months. It just got really bad and I started like calorie deficiting in my head and it was like, it just wasn't good for me. So I like to focus on how my body feels when I'm eating foods. And if I don't feel good, I take a note of like, hey, what did I eat today? Or in the last three days that could be causing me to not feel good. All right, you guys, and tip number five is consistency. I have been consistently working out every single day for at least 30 minutes a day I think since May, I started working out with Sydney Cummings in May, and I think at some point I was working out three or four days a week. I slowly built up to that. I worked out three days a week and then four days a week, and I took full on rest days, you guys, because I was in flares and my body was not recovering as well. So I really listened to my body. And then in the last couple months, at least the last two months, three months, I've been working out every single day for 30 minutes. And then two weeks ago, I joined the Chrissy Chella Evolve You 14 day ab challenge, which has started me doing like five to 10 minutes of abs every single day. I'm gonna include a little clip right here because I was so excited to start this challenge. So let's journey back really fast. Hello YouTube fam. This is an incredibly impromptu video, but I am so inspired to do this. My main goal in fitness this year has been finding movement daily that works really good for me and my body that feels good for me that I can do consistently. And I've been sticking with Sydney Cummings and I've recently incorporated Pilates because my goal has been more cardio and more abs. Those are just the things that I can do for me. Like I can't do a lot of really heavy weights right now. My body's not really recovering when I do really heavy lift days. So I've been focusing on abs and we're going to Maui in 14 days. And I just watched a Chrissy Chella video promoting Evolve You, the app. I'll pop it up over here. And it's like 10 minutes a day of 100 ads. It's like a 100 ab challenge or something. So I'll put a little screen grab of what it is right here. And today's day one. We're gonna do a little body check-in. This is what we're looking like right now. And you guys, it'll be nutrition, obviously, as well. 
We've done ab challenges here before. We'll do ab challenges again. This challenge just popped up in like the perfect time. So I'm super excited. We're gonna jump in and do 10 minutes of abs with Chrissy Chilla right now. My office. I was so excited to start that challenge. I mean, my goal is abs, right? And I've been telling myself all year, I just wanna do five to 10 minutes of abs every day. Like I just wanna be able to like be sitting at my desk and be like, you know what? I just wanna take a couple minutes and do some abs. It's not huge, it's not crazy, but little tiny baby steps towards my goal is gonna get me there so much faster than not doing anything. You know what I'm saying? So this last 14 days of doing the Evolve You challenge was so good for me because now I wake up and I either I do abs right then and there or I last night I was doing abs while Doug was reading Live a Bedtime Story and you know they're all snuggled up. Great, I'm gonna lay on the floor and do five, 10 minutes of abs. We are done, I feel good. My core is feeling stronger than ever. I'm feeling stronger than ever. And so I'm just gonna continue to do five, 10 minutes of abs every single day because I've made it a habit. So now I've got 10 minutes of abs and I've been walking more because walking makes my body feel good. So a lot of my cardio has been walking. So finding exercise and finding movement that you love love that you crave that is what's going to keep you going and keep you motivated to do what you really want and to achieve all of your goals so that's it for today's video you guys those are my top five tips which tip resonated the most with you let me know in the comments down below because i want to know these have seriously changed my life and changed my body I love them. I am so proud of myself for getting to where I am right now. I cannot wait to film another video like this for you guys and show you guys how ripped I am and just how healthy I am feeling. Even coming out of a flare, I am happier, healthier, stronger because I continued to move my body even while I was in a flare. I allowed myself to rest, but I still moved my body and I still lifted weights when I could. And that is what's important to me. I wanna get through the end of this year happy, healthy, and strong instead of sending myself into a flare. So this year's fall fun content is going to be lots of fun, lots of fall recipes, but I'm keeping them very healthy this year. So if you guys are here for the health journey, I am so glad. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any fun fall content. We are heading to Maui tomorrow, and so you guys will be seeing some really fun Maui content coming for you, and then as soon as October hits, we are going to jump right into all the fun fall content. So don't forget to like and subscribe because you don't want to miss it. If you hit that little notification bell, it'll just let you know when my next video comes out. I love you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye!